Oh. There he is. Fish on. Oh, it's a double. It's a double. Yeah. Hey, I got a double, bro. There we go. This is what we've been trying to do. Hello and good morning everybody. Welcome back to Cambo Trout Fishing. Now what you're going to see today is my first trip for the White Perch Run of 2022. If you do enjoy perch videos, you can also check out my Yellow Perch video from earlier this year. And hopefully, I'll be able to squeeze in one or two more trips on the Perch Run before it expires for the year. Now, when it comes to the gear that I use today, throughout the video, I'm going to insert different tips, I'm going to show you the different lures, I'm going to show you the different rigs, and hopefully you'll be able to put all that together to have your own success on the water. We'll talk about where I found the fish, different techniques that work to different extents throughout the day, the best baits, the best lures, and more. But for right now, let's get to the fishing. A quick tip to start things off here. These are usually very shallow water rivers where these fish are spawning. If you're using a motor, it either needs to be very quiet or better yet, approach stealthily with your paddle. Otherwise, you can really put those fish down for a while and delay that bite or scatter them entirely. I don't think it's a perch, <laughs> but he's on with something nice. <laughs> oh, buddy. Dude, this is serious. Oh, man. Here you got a stripe. I hope my clue holds up. <laughs> oh, I'm on. Oh, he got off. Dang. Oh. Catfish King. Catfish King? Now, what I just lost was definitely a, a perch or something. That was a nice one, too. I got one real, real tiny hook on here. You ever hear of a lure called Atomic Dog Bone? No. <laughs> <laughs> I know the name of something else, ain't it? But, uh,. I mean, it's real small, and what you actually fish on it normally is a soft plastic paddle tail that's literally probably about a quarter inch long. Hey, yeah? I wouldn't call him a hog, but it's definitely not a small perch. Definitely not. Come here, you rascal. Oh, you know, you don't hook my anchor line. You. There you go. That's a nice perch. Yeah. Yeah, I think you'll come home. That is not a perch, folks. I don't know what it is yet, but it's not a perch. <laughs> I got to loosen this drag a little bit. It's only four pound test. I think it, it's kind of fighting like a striper. It's not fighting like a cat. I'm, I'm not feeling the rolls, you know? Let's see what we have here. It is a cat, you filthy cat. He just started his rolls. <laughs> You filthy catfish. Uh, that's me and Jamie are 1-1 one, one now for catfish. <laughs> Come here, you jerk. I'm not here for you. Eh, right there. Yeah. That's eater size fish. Oh, you can come home. You want to play the game? We'll play the game. <laughs> and that one ate my shad dart with a minnow tip. Oh. Doubled up. Doubled up. Yeah. There we go. That's what we're looking for over there. But yes, folks, we are fishing for the freezer today. <laughs> catfish is it better not be a catfish. Don't even say that word. Because then I'm gonna take the lead. It's gonna be it's gonna be two one. That's a good fish, not a catfish. Let's see what we got here. That's a bass. <laughs> That's <laughs> a largey. <laughs> what in the world? It is a multi-species environment. We're going to catch a few different ones out here today, folks. Come here, little largey. Come here, little... Oh, you got some sharp teeth for a bass. You got some sharp little teeth, buddy. So long now. That's them minnows, man. Those minnows are opening the door to me for a few different species. 
Oh, lost that minnow though. I do what I do. <laughs> uh oh, Jamie's on. Oh, man. Folks, that's Jamie's third perch in a row right there. <laughs> I think we found him. Yeah, that's a good perch. That's what we're looking for. Look at that perch, folks. You want that one? Oh, uh, yeah, if you ain't going to keep it. Oh, yeah. Yep, I, I just got a small one, folks. That's a big male, bro. You ever seen the Australian variety of these? Yeah. They look pretty cool, man. Yeah, they the, the big European perch, the yellow perch. Yup. Imagine that, dude. Here you go. I, otherwise, I'm going to be forever getting over there. Wow. Yeah, that's perch right there. Now, as you're fishing for these perch, you may find a spot where you're getting a lot of hits, and then all of a sudden, they seem to be gone. And that's because these schools of perch, they're migratory. They're moving through these areas. Sometimes you get lucky and they'll stage in an area and you can catch them there all day. But if a spot does go cold for too long, consider moving around, do some scouting. It really paid off for us this day to get back on those schools. Uh, it's a red ear, dude. <laughs> or a red breast. <laughs> That's a nice one, dude. Look at that. That's a nice red breast. Not what we're looking for. Or actually, it's a long ear. I'm gonna go through every sunfish species before I call this thing the right name. There you are, you little rascal. Feels like a nice perch. Yup. Yup, I just got a small one off of here, and now I got a nice one. Now I got a nice one. That's what we're looking for right there. That is a nice perch. Alright, that's two fish out of that same hole. I'm definitely heading back there. These schools are moving so fast today. Like, we'll catch a few fish out of a hole, and then all of a sudden they're gone. So, I'm going to try and put another cast on here really quickly. I have an idea. Let's try this. Yeah, let's give that a shot and see what happens. Oh, there he is. What did I say? What did I say? Okay. Now he's not a keeper. But he's proof positive there's still fish over there. Whoops. That minute was about done. Go ahead, buddy. I saw that line twitch. That's how I knew she was on there. She hit her on the fall. Which probably means they're very close to the bottom. Probably right on it. All right, now I am just upstream of the hole that I want to fish. So this should give me a much easier angle to tackle it. As soon as I turned the camera off, I hooked up. That's a decent one. That's a decent one. Not as big as my last one, but definitely a decent perch. There he is. There he is. Thank you, little buddy. You're going to go back, at least for this year. <laughs> Let's try a little bit farther out. Yeah, let's see what that does. Right now I'm watching my line as it drops, waiting to see a jump. Yep, there he is. Yeah, I found a little school now. Oh, he's wrapped. Oh, he got him off. Ha-ha. Now that's even closer to a keeper. Still not quite, but much closer. Since I know they're here, I am gonna try some grass shrimp on this cast. See if I can get my money's worth out of these little puppies. But I mean, don't get me wrong, normally grass shrimp is pretty much the best bait you can use for white perch, in my experience. But, like I said, today Jamie's done really well with it, but I've had most of my luck. Not all of it, but most of it I've had on the minnow. There he is. There he is. Uh -huh. All right. And still, I think they're getting a hair bigger each time. Head up. That's number five off this tree. Oh, number six, number six. And that one came on the grass shrimp. All right, all right.
Oop. There he is. Fish on. Same thing. I saw the line jump. Oh, it's a double. It's a double. Yeah. Hey, I got a double, bro. There we go. This is what we've been trying to do. Hey folks, let's actually run through the rigs that I was using today. So, one of the ones I was using was this Bass Pro Tiny Light Rod and Reel Combo. It comes stock with six pound test on it. I would highly recommend replacing the line. As I put it through the motions and given it more use, the memory and the knots and the loops have decreased, but they're still more common than I would like. If you want a better line, I would say aim for P-Line, Sunline, one of those brands out there, anywhere between four to six pound test if you want to play the ultralight game. You can catch perch on heavier gear, but it's way more fun on the ultralight rigs like this. I did use a beetle spin while I was out there. I always carry one of these with me just in case the bite for everything else is just not working out because this has saved my day more times than I can count. But I caught a few on it, but it was by far not the most productive. The most productive rig we used out there was a tandem rig, which you've probably seen before or may have seen before in the video I entitled My Favorite Yellow Perch Rig. In that video, I show you how to tie that rig with a shoelace because the shoelace shows up much better on a video like this. It's much easier for you to see, but I will show you on today's video exactly how to tie it. But before I show you how to tie this, let me actually walk you through the different lures you're gonna use on this rig. The heaviest I'll generally go when I'm using jig heads for this, unless I'm fishing really deep water, is gonna be pretty small. The heaviest might be about 1 16th, but I'll usually go even lower than that, down to 1 32nd or even 1 64th. And the best producing lures we had out there were very, very tiny tube jigs. Because when it comes to perch fishing and crappy fishing, you'll get a variety of different kinds of options out there. This is about as big as I would go, especially for white perch. And that's maybe at most about a two inch lure right there. Two inch soft plastic you would put on a jig head. But the best luck we were having came on something much smaller. These are a little bit closer to that size, and this is essentially just a very small, soft plastic paddle tail. That, that's, that's really all you're looking at right here. The body on this one is jointed. If you can see that right there, I'm gonna try and get it in front of the camera, there we go. And that one is about an inch, maybe inch and a half. But I have one even smaller than that, that you may have heard me mention in the video, and it's called an atomic dog bone. The atomic dog bone, I believe it comes with a 1 64th ounce jig head. I could be wrong, it could be 1 32nd, but it's very small. And I'll show you why in a minute, because here's the soft plastic that you generally use with it. Here it comes, okay? You can see how small that lure is up next to my thumbnail. That's about how big the tube jig was that was working really well at the end of the day. At the end of the day, the best colors seem to be pinks and reds, but we caught on pretty much all colors out there. And whatever jig head we were using, we were generally speaking tipping it either with very small minnows or with grass shrimp. By the end of the day, I think the grass shrimp outperformed everything else, but very small minnows did well for me too, especially for that multi-species action. And one other lure I would highly encourage you to always have in your arsenal if you're gonna be crappy, yellow perch or white perch fishing, are the Gulp series of products. Now, I like their minnows, and their minnows come in different sizes that are appropriate for perch and crappy fishing. One of them would be the two and a half inch version, which you can see right here, although the tail's kind of bent up. And the other one that I prefer is the Gulp Fry. That is a one inch itty bitty little minnow right there, okay? Those things will destroy the perch, absolutely destroy them. Just always be careful storing your gulp. Make sure that you close the container or the bag all the way. And even then, eventually it's gonna leak. That's just the nature of using gulp. And we're <laughs> keep it somewhere where you don't mind it stinking because gulp stinks terribly. So now that I've shown you the different lures, I'm gonna select two of them to show you as an example to go ahead and tie this rig that we were using out there. Now, please note the lures I'm gonna use on here are gonna be a little bit bigger than I would generally recommend for fishing out there but it should help us show up on the camera for you as well. So to kick things off, I'm gonna take this jig head, I'm gonna put it onto the line and just kind of let it hang right here. Now this top one is gonna receive a dropper loop. That's how it's gonna be tied on. To do that dropper loop with the jig head on the line, what you do, first thing you do is fold the line over on itself. 
and then pinch it at the top. See, I'm pinching at the top. And with that tag end, I'm gonna put it through this loop once, twice, three times. Now, you see where my middle finger is holding out that loop that I've been working with up top? Not the one the lure sitting on, the loop I'm holding up top so it can't unravel. That's what I'm gonna put this hook through, is that top loop. I'm gonna try and get a better shot of it for you. You see it sitting on top? That's the loop I'm gonna put it through. Now, when you pull it through that loop, if it's too long, if this loop is too long, it's gonna cause the lure to wrap back on the line and decrease the action. You don't want that. Moisten the knot, cinch it down, okay? And there is your dropper loop. That's your upper hook. Now your next jig head, you're gonna tie on about six to eight inches down from that. For that one, I'm just gonna use an improved clinch knot. It's a fairly simple knot. Put it through the eyelet, and then I'm gonna wrap it around the line about six to eight times. So one, two, three, and you can now see those wraps around the line. I'm gonna go through the bottom loop and then through the loop I just created. I'm gonna moisten it again before I cinch it down. And that is your basic rig we were using out there. Jig on the bottom. If you're using two different weight jigs, you want the heavier one on the bottom. Up to the dropper loop, and that's about six to eight inches apart. This one's probably closer to eight inches right now. Now, at the beginning of the day, we were using this without a float, and it was working well. But later in the day, when the bike got really hot, it seemed like maybe the perch started moving a little bit more shallow. That's when we started using a float. We were fishing that float probably about three to four feet above the bottom hook. That seemed to be keeping it right to depth where they wanted to hit it. And then you're gonna work that with quick pops, pop, pop, or a single pop, let it sit for maybe two to three seconds at most when they're biting heavy. Pop, pop, let it sit, pop, pop. Watch that float, because they'll suck it down. You gotta be quick with it. Now everyone generally has their favorite kind of floats. I tend to prefer the cork weighted floats. And for casting, the shorter, more stout ones seem to be a little bit better at not getting line twists. That's probably a good note for you. And when you're selecting them, I like to select a float that's really just high enough to sit in the water with the water line being right around the middle of the float and be easy enough that the fish can pull it under without too much resistance because that seems to cut down on them releasing it early. It gives you more time to set that hook. So that's pretty much the rig, folks. If you have any questions, anything I didn't cover, just let me know. And since you're using light line, last thing I would say is make sure you have that drag set because you never know when you might hook into a hog perch, a bass, you know, a big crappy, anything else out there that might put a little bit more strain on that line than you would otherwise want when you're ultralight fishing. So keep that drag set and check the drag. Make sure it's not also not too light before you set that hook because it's a terrible feeling when you set that hook and the drag is and you don't have enough pressure to actually hook that fish. So hope these tips help. Hope you enjoyed the video and y'all have a good one.